Hey, this is Tim Pierce. Here's some highlights from part two of my basic blues course. We're going to look at the first three phrases and a little piece of the outro too. Click the link below if you want to check out the 10 video episode on this with the tabs and the jam track. So I'll start low here. I'm sliding up with my third finger on the fifth string. I slide up to seven. And then I play five, seven, Seven. So, slide up to seven, go to the fourth string, go five to seven, go to the third string, go five, and then back to seven on the fourth string. And then a little bit of vibrato on that last note. We're down here in A minor pentatonic. One more time, sliding up to seven, string five, over to string four, five to seven, string three, fret five, back to seven on string four. Then the next thing we do, it requires a bit of a stretch and a bit of strength in your little finger. So I come up to fret eight, and I pull off down to seven, and then down to five. So pull off, and then pull off again. And if you're new at playing the guitar, this might be a hard one. This little finger to the third finger thing. Might help you to do them both in succession kind of quicker, quicker, quickly. <laughs> it's almost harder just to go. So your little finger pulls off to your third finger, which pulls off to the index finger revealed on string three at fret five. And the end of this phrase is what I call a seesaw. Seven, five, seven. And it sounds good at slow speed. clapped into me. And each time you land on this note, I do some vibrato and it should, I like I like slow vibrato that comes from the wrist. So that's what I'd recommend. And you're literally just turning your wrist like this to create the vibrato. Now let me move up the neck and demonstrate here. It's exactly the same thing, but the position changes because of the way the guitar is tuned. And I'm seeing the A minor up here, this A minor chord. That's the position we're in. And I slide up. You can just slide up indiscriminately from wherever you want to catch your finger as you slide up. It can be anywhere as you're sliding. But you need to land with your second finger on string three at fret nine. Okay, then we go eight, 10, eight, 10 mirror image of what was down here. So, 9, 8, 10, 8, 10. And then this happens from 11 to 10 to 8. Finish out this phrase with 10, 8, 10 on the second string. And the little finger is really easy to grab right here because it's kind of right there at 11 anyway. So you're pulling off 11, 10, 8, 10, 8, 10. Do these slowly. Then down here. Back up. Now the only variation is this. Land at 10 and slide all the way up to 13 and back down to 10. And that's a note that replaces the... You go... You don't have to pick. Or you can pick the last note at 10 if you want. You can just let it slide down. Or... Really up to you what you do with the right hand there. But really it's the accurate slide from 10 to 13 to 10. That's the important thing. 
<laughs> Conversely, when you're down here, it's 7 to 10 to 7. But for me, it's not as effective down here. I enjoy going... Even blending these two strings together. This double stop right here at 5 on strings 2 and 3, that's an option too. But practicing the slide down there is a good thing anyway. Accurately being able to slide from fret to fret is an important thing. So this riff also sounds good to me at half speed. But I'll slow it down even more. Now it starts exactly the same way as the other riff with the pull-off, the middle of the other riff, with the pull-off at 11 to 10 to 8. So we know that. Your little finger's at 11, drops to 10, drops to 8. And then the fourth note of this four note phrase is on the B string at fret 10. So that's where we land. And again, I'm seeing this A minor chord right here. For an A minor pentatonic, I'm seeing the A minor. So the four note phrase is this. And then we start to walk down in increments. Because this was the first note, now we start a phrase, beginning on the second note, that advances down four notes. And so here, at 10, we drop down. So this is 10, 8, 10, 8. You put these together, it sounds like this. Now one of the important things to note here is that you want to connect them in a smooth way. What that means is when you land on note number four, the third finger has to flatten and kind of roll itself off the second string so we can start the new phrase. That's the action right there. Conveniently, when it does that, it's muting any sound from the second string. And then what happens is you simply pull off 10 to 8 on the E string, and then 10 to 8 on the B string. Do this again really slow. 11, 10, 8, 10, 10, 8, 10, 8. One more. And as I always say, you want all the notes to be just as equal as equal in volume, even though you're picking some and you're just pulling off some and hammering on some. Until the pick notes are a little louder, but it's pretty close. Now we move to the next note in the scale and advance down from there. And that's this note right here, the C note, fret number eight, <laughs> yeah, fret number eight on the E string. So, so when you advance down there, you go eight, ten, eight, nine. Put all three of these together. Once again, you have to roll across to start this phrase. Here we had to do it here. And this is cool, because you have to do it with the index finger here. It's good training. So we're here, string two, fret eight, and we need to flatten out the index finger the same way we did it up here, and pick up the next phrase, starting here with the flat part of the index finger as it mutes the note it just played. Put all three of these together. And then the last phrase is simply 10, 8, 9, 8, 10. Down and up. Of 
craving a fast version. Mid speed. I, think I added one note in there. That's right. Now I'm going to go really slowly and do all the phrases again. Roll the finger over. Roll the index finger over. Finish it out. Lots of pull-offs. Pull off, pull off, pull off. Pull off here. Pull off here. Pull off here. Pull off again. And the idea is to connect them smoothly. Now let's look at this down the octave. On string three, the G string, I'm going to use the same hand movement, and it's going to start at fret eight and drop to seven and drop to five. Landing on fret seven, string four. So it's a mirror image of this. Instead of starting at fret 11, I start on fret seven on string three on the G string. It takes a few different muscles to do this. It's a bit more of a stretch because you're down the neck a bit. The strings are thicker. It just feels a little different. But you're doing the same thing. Then the next phrase starts on the G string also. Seven to five, <clears throat> and then seven to five on the D string. And just like up here, when you arrive at the fourth note, you need to flatten out your third finger, bring it over to the, the G string, and start again. It's this flatten and roll over, and just like the other situation, it's really kind of convenient because as the finger rolls over, it mutes the adjacent string. And then there's two pull-offs. Third phrase, you start here at fret five, string three. Seven, five, seven. Five, seven, five, seven. All three phrases. And next we have another rollover. Flatten your third finger, roll it over to string four, fret seven and start the last phrase, which becomes. So on string four, we've got seven, five, seven, five, seven. Pull off on string four. On string five, land on the seventh fret, and come back up on string four. And that's the mirror of this last phrase. But you see the position is slightly different because of the way the guitar is tuned. I'm going to do it again. I'm going to break them up. This exercise for rolling your fingers from one string to the other it happens three times. And this riff sounds good at half speed also. A little vibrato on the last note always helps. It sounds good at full speed and at half speed. And it works fine over this jam track at both speeds. So when you practice, you can practice it slow or fast. You can even practice it even slower than half speed and it'll work. One more time up high. And then 
exactly the same down low. So next the band goes to D, and I'm not really sure if it's major or minor, and that's a good thing because then I can choose to do either. So what I first do is a very strong D minor arpeggio uh, modality. At the end of it, I do a little slice of D major. So my hand is already down here. I've just played the open D, and I walk through a D minor arpeggio. So D string, third fret, G string, second fret, B string, third fret, and then the E string, second fret, and then I pull off. So watch this, it's a, it, I trace, basically trace a D minor here. And if I put a D in the bass, you can really hear it. And you can also see it when I take one finger away, and just reveal this D minor right there. And I can replace that note and do the kind of arpeggiated notes that I chose. So that's it, I'm, I'm walking up a D minor arpeggio, seeing this D minor chord right there. So I pull off, and then walk back down. Hit the D note, pull off from two to open, pull off three, two, open, and then I do three to open on this string, and get a little bluesy. You can look at it that way, this last piece first piece. You do it really, really slowly. Second finger, third fret. One more time fast. What I do is I bring my hand up to kind of the first position, back in A minor. We haven't landed on A minor yet. We're about to. And I do this D major blues double stop thing right here that you've probably seen before. I'm on fret seven, strings two and three, barring with the third finger. And then down to five on strings two and three, barring with the index finger. 